Hello, my name is Mark Dolinar. I'm an applications engineer here with Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be talking about a quick tech tip with REST machining. For this example, we have a part that has been partially programmed. If I run the simulation of this particular design, we can notice that this very top feature pocket has been machined away. But inside of the pocket itself, there are still areas where material was not touched in this roughing operation. This is more likely due to the size of our tool than the feature itself. What we could do is potentially change out this tool for a smaller size, and that would allow us to get into these smaller gaps and machine away some of the material. However, in doing so, this will also increase our cycle time, leading to a longer program. If we don't want to sacrifice time in order to remove the material so that our finishing operation doesn't have to cut through, what we can do is add a rest machining operation. What rest machining does is graphically displays the theoretical areas of the feature that have yet to be machined with our previous operation. With this, we can then assign a tool to go through and machine away any of the remaining material. Let's take a look and see how this works in action. Going into our cam feature tree, I can right click on the mill part setup that I would like to add a new operation to, choose the two and a half axis mill operations and select on rough mill. Adding a new operation into an existing program is fast and simple. And though we don't always have to jump out of this dialog box, I personally like working in the operations parameters dialogs a little bit better. We can change the tool here. I'll leave that to our next step. I am gonna have to link this new operation to an existing feature. We can choose the irregular pocket one for this particular operation. Finally, I can hit OK, and by hitting OK, the Operations Parameters dialog box will appear, allowing me to go through, change my tool, change my machining operation, maybe to a rest machining in order to remove the remaining material. To get started, I'm first going to go to my Tool tab, select on my Tool crib, and kind of find a tool in here that will work in order to fit through these smaller gaps. In this particular example, this 10 millimeter flat end mill should do the trick. Coming in here should be just enough room to get by on either side. I'll hit select, and this will automatically add this tool into our tool tree. If there is any warning about the holder, hit yes again to change the holder out as well. Once we have a, the correct size tool selected, I can then go into our roughing tab. Underneath roughing, you'll notice that we have this rest machining option. Now by default, we have this generate command turned on for every single one of our operations. So the previous roughing operation, this was turned on and a rough kind of theoretical area of what would be missed was automatically pre uh, pre-calculated so that we can use that in this particular operation. In order to activate rust machining, we'll have to hit this drop down and choose either from work in progress or from the previous leftover file. Choosing either one are going to give you slightly different results. First, if we choose from work in progress, we have more flexibility as to what we're machining away with this particular operation. You'll notice that we have this icon with three dots located right next to it. And by clicking this on, I actually have the ability to select or deselect previous operations in order for those to be included in the calculations of what material is still left to be machined. In this particular example, I only have this rough mill one operation. And that's the only one that is showing up. However, if there were a few other operations that were already included inside of this feature, they would show up on this list 
allowing me to either select or not select individual operations to be calculated into place. We also have the ability to go through and change out the calculation so that it's either fine or coarse, just giving us a little bit more flexibility when machining the material away. You also have the ability to use from previous leftover. From previous leftover actually uses the generated uh, remaining material and adds that into a theoretical calculation of what still needs to be removed in this particular operation. In my opinion, the work in progress is going to be a little bit easier and gives you a little bit more flexibility. So I'll go ahead and add that. We'll hit the preview button and SOLIDWORKS CAM will go through and regenerate out the toolpath to see if we are able to remove all that additional material. As you can see here, it's gone through and removed the material from all of the remaining sections. That looks okay. I can jump back down and then re-simulate out the toolpath just to double check and make sure that we were able to remove all of the additional material. Now by using the rest machining operation, we were able to remove the material without dramatically increasing our cycle time, allowing us to program and machine our parts that much faster as we go. The rest machining is a very valuable operation. One side note, it is not available for a two and a half axis feature such as a tapered wall. So keep that in mind while you're going through and utilizing this feature. However, that's gonna be the end of this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube page for more educational content such as this.